Hola, bon dia, um, hello, good morning and welcome to Portugal Dreams. We're going to update you on the fires which some of you know about. We've had three in the locality, quite close to us. Steve's going to update you on the build, that's coming along quite well. I've done fish and chips, uh, English battered fish um, and we'll show you what else we've been up to. So this morning I'm uh, going to make an attempt on fitting Debbie's cooker, that's the big one behind me. Uh, we've got a gas bottle, uh, we've already got electric down to it but it all needs connecting. Um, also the gas bottle needs connecting and obviously we've got to test, pressure test it and things like that as we go. So I'll show you what we're doing there. So we're having to do a bit of a voiceover on this uh, video because the builders are making such a noise. Um, what we're actually doing is uh, taking Ellie Rosie's cooker out. Um, that's going to go into uh, her house as soon as we uh, start doing it. But then we're going to fit uh, Debbie's now. Uh, it's been stood here for quite a while, so yeah, I think it's time it got used. So one of the first jobs to do is get Ellie Rosie's cooker out of the way. Uh, so we can get access to the uh, back of Debbie's. Obviously we'll have to pull Debbie's forward a little bit um, for the gas piping to run and that'll run to the gas bottle which is in between the two cupboards as you can see at the back there and then the gas pipe will run around the back of the cupboards. So Ellie Rose's will be uh, still coming back here, uh, it's going to be there for a temporary, at the moment we use it as a worktop so so we're just going to uh, pull all this lot forward uh, so we can get access to the back of Debbie's to do the gas piping and the electrics and then we're just going to put uh, this one back into place just as a standby really um, and a worktop so the Ali Rose is in bad to move, it's uh, just plugged into a normal European socket. So I just unplug it and pull it forward. So as you can see the uh, electrician left us quite a lot of wire when he did the uh, wiring for the cooker. So I've already checked that the power's off on this wiring. And this wiring's already got some connectors on, um, which hopefully I can still use. Um, We'll see as we go. Uh, the cooker's actually got quite a long black lead with it as well. So I've got a couple of options with this wiring. Um, I can either put the uh, white wire direct into the back of the cooker or put the uh, two wires together using the connectors. So because we don't know where the cooker's going to end up placed permanently um, what I think I'm going to do is join these two wires. So uh, we'll get the uh, gas piping in and uh, probably leave this cable as long as it is um, for now. Uh, I don't really want to cut it down too much until we know exact placement of the oven. So the uh, cooker comes with some gas adapters, uh, there's a couple of them, um, and also a bracket which goes into the uh, wall and fastens onto the cooker. Um, but we're not going to knock a hole in the wall for it yet as it needs quite a big hole. Um, yeah, it also has these two support brackets, uh, one either side, uh, which screw into the wall just to stop the cooker falling forward. I'm going to fasten these brackets in. Um, not that I think it'd fall forward, it's quite a hefty thing. So this also comes, it's the adapter to fit onto the gas pipe on the cooker. Um, but uh, because of the size of the 
pipe. It also comes with a smaller adapter. So obviously some countries have a bigger, use a bigger adapter. Um, but I'm just going to screw this little adapter into this pipe, tighten it up. So we're just going to uh, position this on the uh, cooker and run the pipe towards the gas bottle and fasten it on there. A new regulator as well, so we should be all good. So I've put some PTFE tape into this joint and tightened it finger tight. But I need to go and get some tools to tighten it up fully. And also I need a bigger spanner to tighten this onto the cooker. So what I've got to do now is uh, fit this adapter, uh, this one, onto the bottom of the cooker uh, with some PTFE obviously. And uh, then put the hose on. So that's it all wrapped with PTFE and I'm just going to put the connector on. So the connector also has this fibre washer in it, so I just have to make sure that it's seated right. So that's it uh, fastened up nice and tight. Um, so what we'll do when we get the gas pipe on is we'll check these uh, joints here for leaks. Uh, I'll show you how we do that later. So I'm just going to put a bit of washing up liquid around the bottom of this pipe. Um, it's just so the pipe will shove up a bit better because I want it on as far as possible. So that's the pipe pushed right up. Um, I've already got the clips onto the pipe down at the bottom. Don't forget to put them on because you won't be able to put them on later. Uh, so I'm just going to slide one of these up and tighten it up. So this is the electrical connector on the back of the cooker. I've decided to wire straight into this. So just going to take the black cable out and put our white cable straight in. So I'm just going to put the white cable in. I think it will be a lot neater and we'll keep the black cable for later just in case. But we do have uh, quite a lot of spare white cables, so we should be able to move it a foot or so if we need to. So with this being in an enclosed space, um, I ain't got a lot of room. Uh, you can't read the um, markings on it to see which where the wires go. So I'm going to take a photograph so then I'll know where they come from. It isn't so bad when there's only two or three wires, but when you have like 40, 50 wires in a connector like I did have in the other job, um, it can get a bit of a problem trying to remember where they are if one just pops out accidentally. So yeah, photographs are always good. So I'm just going to cut these uh, three connectors off. Obviously, uh, make sure the power's off before you start cutting any of these. So that's the wire stripped off and ready to go. And they just go into this connector block. So I'll just have to put the camera down while I do this because it's uh, quite a tight space where I'm working in and I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time. Um, and some of the shots aren't very good because it's a little bit too tight. So I've just had a little bit of a um, shock off this uh, back of this cooker. So I'm just going to test it with my little circuit tester. Um, and probably, as you can see, there's no power on anything. Uh, I have checked it at the fuse box, but when you go to check the earth, I think you might be able to see the neon glow in there uh, on the circuit tester. So, yeah, I can't leave it like that, so what I'm going to do is uh, disconnect all this again. Um, make these wires safe by putting some connectors on them and uh, we'll get in touch with the electrician who did the um, original wiring and fuse box and just see where we go from there. So I can't do the cooker electrically, but uh, 
I have fitted the gas. Uh, the only problem is, obviously, um, it won't spark ignite because without any electric. Uh, so she'll have to use it, uh, light it with a lighter. Um, but I'm just going to make sure there's no leaks anywhere. So I've just got the thing to test for the leaks with. Uh, nice bright lighter. Uh, just go around the hills. No, I'm just kidding. Um, soapy water. Uh, so I'm just going to get some soapy water, put it around the, all the joints and see if we get any bubbles. So I've just made up a soap solution. It's only washing up liquid and water. I'm going to uh, brush it around the joints. I'd have rather sprayed it, you get a bit better coverage, but uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll just put some soap around it and leave it for 10 minutes and look for bubbles. So I've been checking my joint for a long while. Uh, as you can see, there's still some water in the uh, top nut. I hope you can see that anyway. Um, and obviously it's not blowing any bubbles. So, yep, that's now usable as a gas cooker. <laughs> um, that's just for the hob at the top. But obviously we won't be able to use it as an oven at the moment until we uh, get the electrical system checked. Something's gone wrong there. Uh, I don't know whether the builders have done something when they've been working or whether it's been a fault on that particular um, cooker fuse. So as you can see the uh, cooker breaker is turned off. Um, it didn't uh, trip the RCD either when I uh, touched the earth and the live on the back of the cooker and got a little buzz. Um, which is what made me start checking. Um, so I think really all I can do is get the uh, electrician to have a check on this lot for us. So I've just come out because we've got quite a large fire going on at the uh, other side of the mountain just behind us. As you can see there's a lot of smoke coming up. Uh, there's a lot of fire planes flying about. I think the, uh, there's 400 firefighters at it at the moment. I think it said when I looked and uh, seven air resources so that could be planes, helicopters that sort of thing I uh, hope everybody's surfing it uh, you can see there's or as you can probably hear there's a helicopter in the uh, distance flying over it as well uh, but when you get to looking through the trees at the bottom you can just see it coming over the hill we can't see a great deal of it from here because of the um, trees pine trees at the bottom but uh, yeah it looks like it's quite a big one so the fire we were watching through the trees earlier is now spreading um, they seem to have it under control for a while but uh, this wind's picked up quite a lot as you can probably hear and it's now spread further out um, yeah apparently there's another one at Penamacara as well and it's certainly smoky over that way um, yeah it's a little bit worrying um, it's obviously something we've got to keep an eye on uh, but at this moment in time it's a reasonable distance from us but in this sort of wind it can spread quite quickly um, yeah the one straight ahead what's not in the not between the trees now wasn't there 10 minutes ago and it's yeah quite a blaze at the moment so the builders are finished for the weekend, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at uh, what's going on. So most of the roof's tiled, uh, the tiles at the bottom don't worry about tipping down too far, there's something to go under them all the way along the edges. Uh, they've uh, tiled around the G 
chimney at that side. Uh, they've also got some metal plate in there as the valley. Uh, cool bit. Same round here, the tiles need straightening out down near the bottom. Uh, that's not a finished product. And then where the valley gutter is, uh, it's not as so pretty. Uh, they said they're going to repoint some of that and sort that out. So, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. But they have had quite an angle to work at, uh, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, uh, they've started filling the gap in the wall in at that side. Uh, this is just rough finish, it's gonna have some render and what have you on these edges of the tiles as well so you know there's a lot of sort of work still to do although you know it's beginning to now take shape and now look like a roof and it's pretty flat as I say the edges are gonna have something else under them and then be rendered and what have you so yeah, looks like it's going quite well. It's been slow the last couple of days, I must say. Um, but I think that's like the fiddly bits now, you know, around the chimney and all that sort of thing. You can see where they've cut uh, bands out to put uh, the steel in, or aluminium, whatever it is. Uh, they don't seem to use lead these days, so yeah, they cut and shape metal for it. Also been rendering this end wall and a few other bits as we go. I'll show you that to excuse the scaffolding. That's looking better. It looks a nice colour as well. Then we've got some funny bits where, yeah, they haven't even started rendering. They seem to work in funny patterns, but uh, yeah, it seems to be coming together. Uh, they still holes in this wall for the tap and the electric socket uh, still got a gap above the door uh, but this side's all been rendered so that's coming along obviously there's the window reveals and things like that to finish and they've started uh, started on the patio the step but uh, let's just back out of that a bit so I've got a bit wider. So I've started on the patio on the step and I've started grouting it with obviously a cement based thing for waterproofing, outside stuff. Done some rendering on Ellie Roses. Right to the end there but there's still the posts and things to do. And I've done all this under Ellie Roses. I've taken the uh, little wall down, which was here, which has opened this up quite nicely. Um, although Ellie Rose did like it being separated, so we might put her a little wall in again at some point, but preferably with stone rather than the tajolo. And I've done quite a lot up there. Still got all the way along to the end of the building to do, and around that side. Uh, but yeah, it's coming along quite nicely. So I've just come up and got a little bit more of a vantage point of these fires. Uh, yeah, as you can see over the hill by the left of the trees, it's quite a big one, and that I think is what's spread to the other bit just further across that way. Um, yeah, hope everybody's safe in it. It's quite a big one, is that? Uh, I haven't seen any aircraft for a bit, although I have heard that these um, eight or nine air resources. That's. I don't know how a, a big fire looks, but that looks really big to me. Really, really big. And this wind, what's blowing up, isn't going to help us all. 
very difficult to see my screen on the camera at the moment so I don't quite know what I'm getting but hopefully you'll be able to see the size of this fire uh, you can see the flames actually on the hill itself this is the one that started about 15 minutes ago uh, it seemed to be a piece that come off the main fire um, and it was under some pylons uh, electrical pylons what are over there not the front ones there's some pylons further back in the smoke which you can't see now uh, you might just be able to make one out or make some out just to the very far left of the smoke uh, but the fire is now sort of overlapping the hill um, yeah the flames are quite quite tall and this wind just didn't help in at all so Steve's finally fitted the cooker and uh, he's going to be making fish and chips been wanting fish and chips for ages the trouble is she's using her uh, Jam pan. Jam pan, so I'm going to be in trouble later. That means a new pan being bought, yeah, I would think. Pan. Yeah, so yeah, you see, the cooker's not all working fully. Um, as I said before, the um, electrics we've got earth leakage somewhere. Uh, thought it might be something to do with the builders because it was okay before. Uh, but they've just unplugged all their equipment and yeah we've still got the same same sort of problem so um, it'll be a call to the uh, electrician who fitted it as I say I can check a lot of things but uh, yeah I don't want to start trying to look for that so we'll keep off the electric at the moment uh, it's perfectly safe using the gas because it's just a totally separate sort of part of it so we've got uh, plenty of cooking oil in there just waiting for that to heat up and uh, I've not even had time to clean the cooker top yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah I see <laughs> I'm making to get on with these things straight away <laughs> I've been shopping all day today so I've not had time to do anything so yeah apart from obviously make fish and chips and a vodka and coke and a vodka and coke because it is Friday night so for the batter, for the uh, fish, I'm just going to pop some plain flour in the bowl. Um, I'll just put a little bit more in, I think. Make sure we've got plenty. Any of those light scraps. Some salt. I've got some water ready. <sighs> Splash of vinegar. Now in Portugal you can't get brown or white vinegar so this is apple cider vinegar or it will be when I cut the top off so it's open. Just a few splashes of that and then some um, baking powder, just mix that in. just needs to be at the right consistency that um, it will spread through your fork fingers slowly. 
So we'll see if I can do it because I've not done this for about 18 months. So that's it nice and smooth but it's too thick. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Steve's really the fish and chip expert. He taught me how to do it. I haven't done it for an awful long time. So that's too thick. Just put a little bit more in. Some people batter the fish. Uh, sorry, some people flour the fish before they batter it. I think it makes it go pasty. I think. What do you think of that, Steve? I think that's okay. Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah. So just let that stand for a while. And I'm just waiting for the oil to heat up and I'll cook the chips first. And then I'll keep the chips warm in the oven while I, batter, while I do the fry the fish. So that's my chips in and cooking. So about 10 minutes or so, they'll be nicely done. Having not eaten that. So you can usually tell when your uh, chips are done because they start floating you don't get as many bubbles. And you can actually see there that they're going a nice golden brown so it's just about time to get them out. So Debbie's just getting them out now, nice golden browny colour. Uh, just testing one with oh. the Nice and soft in the middle and crispy on the outside. That's a good chip should be. And I'm draining them onto kitchen roll inside here and also when I pop them in the oven to keep warm they'll be on kitchen roll as well. Um, so we can drain as much fat off as possible. Because as you know Ellie Rose and I are trying to lose weight but it's Friday night and it's a cheap night. So we're just letting the pan warm up again a little bit. Um, only take it a minute or two. We'll just test with a little bit of batter, a little bubble. Um, but because the fish is frozen and it's a bit wet, we just want to leave the get it nice and warm again. I won't use frozen fish again. I think I'll buy fresh. So that's me fish dipped in the batter, just drained off a little bit and then just drop it in the pan. And there we go. That's it in, well battered and it's come up to the top floating. Now I'll take it five minutes or so, it doesn't take very long. And I'll get another one in there as well. Well, you can see the fish is in the pan, it's drying off quite nicely. Nice colour. Give it a second or two and then we'll flip it back over. Send it through like that and then it'll be ready. Uh, it's, it's not many bubbles, so most of the water's out of it. So, yep, that should be about done. So that's our fish and chips out and ready. I'm just going to go and sit outside with my Bob Cooper and enjoy those. trying to hide. Bless him. <laughs> so that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. 
um, don't forget to like subscribe and press the notification bell if you're not already subscribed please do subscribe it does help our channel to grow um, and we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching bye